our lead coming from the world of responsibility and do your job. Do your job. Some comments came to my attention over the weekend that are worthy of full Maller monologue attention. Now, Naomi Osaka, a tennis player who will be featured in the Olympics playing for Japan, she recently returned to the spotlight. Now, we did a monologue a while back about her exit stage right from the spotlight. She says she's she could not be more excited. Uh, recent comments by Naomi Osaka that she could not be more excited to compete for you know, the country of Japan, uh, her country there at the Olympics. Uh, she has not played competitively since she quit at the French Open back in May. So this is a couple months back, uh, she claimed anxiety and depression because of the evil media. Uh, however, uh, that is not what people are talking about, the fact that she's going to be back on the stage there at the Olympics. Instead, it is a very unique solution that she has cooked up here to fix tennis and the media relations between players and reporters. So I, I don't know if you saw this or not, maybe not. Uh, I thought it was interesting. I wanted to spend a couple minutes on it. So Naomi Osaka suggested that professional tennis should, should institute uh, what she called sick days uh, for athletes at, you know, when, when she returns uh, from her, her, what she claims is a mental health break here. She said, quote, I have numerous suggestions to offer the tennis hierarchy, but my number one suggestion Osaka said, would be to allow a small number of sick days per year where you are excused from your press commitments without having to disclose your personal reasons. That's according to Osaka, uh, she said, I believe this would bring sport in line with the rest of society. All right, let us discuss the question. Where are you at on this one? It's an unorthodox plan from Naomi Osaka to fix tennis and the media and all that. Now, I'm going to go first. I am rolling my eyes to the back of my head on this one. You've got Code of the West, Arsenio Hall, and Grown Ups. And we will connect all of these things together. And we are going to make the Baba Ganoush. Make the Baba Ganoush, Ben. We're going to make the Baba Ganoush. Now, first of all, this has got to be the dumbest idea I've heard of in some time. Right, and, and you wonder, did she come up with this on her own? This sounds like the work of a focus group. I know what we're going to do. We're going to give sick days to not do your job or at half your job. How silly is this? I, I mean, adults look at this and they just like, this is ridiculous. Uh, not surprisingly, though, the wokesters out there are like, well, this is a good idea. You know, a lot of people in the media are sympathetic to the absurd. Rather than just dismissing this out of hand, some are actually embracing it. Undoubtedly, it'll be considered this topic has been politicized and weaponized. Uh, any pushback, you are called nasty names and you're evil and blah, 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 blah. This, that, whatever ism it is, they'll call you all kinds of uh, nasty names. Now, you know, that's standard operating procedure these days. We think it's just dumb. Right, that's a but simple answer. Occam's razor, the simplest answer is the right answer. It's just dumb. All right, so because Naomi Osaka is, in her words, uncomfortable with the press, you need to change the entire system? By the way, that was a rhetorical question. Now, we believe in the code of the West, that life would be easier for everyone if you just simply follow the code of the West, which it, it just makes it easier. Among the tenets of the code of the West, you can Google it, you take pride in your work, check, you always finish what you start, and this is the part that I believe applies to this story. You do what has to be done. Now, if that makes me a gargoyle mixed with Dr. Evil, then so be it. If my hot take is so out there that you should do what has to be done for the job requirement and not skip out on it, and I'm the bad guy, I'll be the bad guy. Now, secondly... Uh, we also believe that Naomi Osaka, Naomi Osaka has established the the level of uh, animosity with the media. Uh, she's embellished it. She's not. She established a certain you know talking point, but she's embellished that uh, because she's been milking this for all it's worth. 
Because on one hand, she, she wants to stay away from the media due to the fact that she's an introvert and uh, not comfortable talking to others. Uh, we hear that a lot. That story gets repeated. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we know that being a victim in 2021 is all the rage. You are beloved by the corporate class in America. The media elites embrace uh, by all the algorithms uh, for your courage and bravery, even when you are exaggerating your claims. Now, I believe what's going on here is exaggeration. What's my evidence? The New York Post exposed Osaka as being a fake, a phony, and a fraud months ago. Let's take a trip back to the Wayback Machine. After winning the what turned out to be the final match when she quit the French Open, she did something that raised many eyebrows that this was not an authentic I hate the media situation. Uh, Osaka allowed herself to be interviewed by a Japanese broadcaster, and as Paul Harvey used to say, you know what the news is, well, now you're going to hear the rest of the story. That interview that Naomi did in Japan was a pay-to-play. The Japanese broadcaster paid her for her time. They paid her for access. They paid her for what she said. She had no issue. No issue blabbing away because she was getting paid for it. And that just scratches the service, right? The very surface here. For example, some other evidence here that there's exaggeration of how bad this media is with Osaka. Uh, she is the star of a Netflix documentary. Now, to make a Netflix documentary, they had to have a film crew with those big boom mics, producers, directors, camera, lighting travel around with her for pretty much all day and all night, 24-7, for an intimate film over on Netflix. Of course, it is more probable than not that she's getting a check for that. You also have Naomi Osaka on the cover of Time magazine, in addition to the cover of Vogue, the Japanese version of Vogue. Uh, do you see a pattern here? Uh yeah, yeah, even uh, Blind Emmett, the Seahawk fan, can see a pattern here. As Arsenio Hall used to say way back 30 years ago, things that make you go, hmm, things that make you go, hmm, nothing I know of, and maybe I'm wrong on this, but nothing I know of screams, I want privacy. I need privacy more than being on the cover of magazines uh, and having a documentary made following you around. There's nothing that really says, boy, I really don't like the media, I don't like the spotlight, than, than this, right? I mean, sounds like she just wants to express her point of view and not have anyone who might disagree with her ask her questions that make things awkward. But maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe I'm wrong on that. And she really just wants to stay out of the spotlight as she does every magazine cover she can possibly do. All right, final thought. So the money that professional athletes make there are built-in requirements, like any job, like any job. We talk often, you got to work out. you got to be in top shape. Your body is what you're selling as a professional athlete, your physical ability. You travel to exotic locations for competitions, tennis in particular, all over the world. It's a global game, and you're bouncing all over the place. You spend time away from your family because you're traveling around. Uh, you also have built-in media responsibilities. These things are all-inclusive. It's part of being in the spotlight that these are all requirements of the job. They're part and parcel to the gig. And these are integral elements to be a professional athlete, especially in tennis where you need all the publicity you can get and you, you know, it's not a, as mainstream, certainly not in America, tennis, as it is in other places. It's more of a niche following the sport of tennis. And, and, and some things uh, are, are not, you know, sometimes you're going to have things that are not rainbows and lollipops. It's, it's, it's not going to always be a bowl of cherries. And it's not supposed to be fun. That's, uh, as the old phrase goes, that's why they call it work. That's why they call it work. And, and just to prove I'm not cold-blooded, uh, you, know, you have a problem. The Maller Think Tank has solutions. That's what we do here in the middle of the night. We have solutions. If Naomi Osaka wants to have sick days, she can have as many as she wants. She simply will not play in those tournaments. She doesn't have to talk to the media. That's how it works. Someone, anyone, can be the grown-up here. Somebody needs to be the grown-up in the room. And if you don't want to talk to the media, that's fine. No sick day. You, you, no, no sick day just from the media. That's like a half day. No, you just take your racket 
and your tennis balls, and that's it. But it's part of being a public figure. If, if you don't want to deal with the media, play club tennis. That's it. Knock yourself out. But if you show up to the Australian Open, the French Open, Wimbledon, or the U.S. Open, and you compete, uh, there will be a gaggle of microphones waiting for you after the match, and uh, you'll have to answer a few questions. And some of them might be uncomfortable. Some of them might be uncomfortable. But but athletes, by their nature, are protagonists, right? They are the leading characters in a sports melodrama. And part of the building and cultivating of a fan base is not just what you do on the field. It's the media access. It's learning about personalities. It's more so now than ever. Everything's about it. the story. You go into a chicken finger restaurant, and they have on the side the story of how the, the company started. Why do they do that? Because people love stories. They love stories. People love to be told stories. They love to learn about stories for, of, of businesses and human beings. It's the story around the sporting event. It's not just the event itself. So you know, go do another couple of cover magazines, do another documentary, and suck it up, Buttercup. How about that? 